Hello and welcome to this year's Year 9 Options presentation. Over the course of the next few minutes, I will run through with you how our curriculum works for years 10 and 11, as well as how the options process takes place this academic year. Please bear in mind that you need to view this presentation alongside having read the options booklet, including all of the introductory pages. Study the options form so that you know which subjects are available in which columns. Listen to the input from staff, be it through lessons or through assembly style presentations and looked at your personalised letter, which advises a pathway for you. The rationale and the reasons behind this year's curriculum are ultimately underpinned by students making their own choices and designing their own curriculum offer. Subject support is built in, so you will find there are a variety of different courses under different umbrella areas. And what we're looking for is students to be committed, motivated and successful through their studies. And what we often find is that if students are choosing courses for themselves, it can mean that they're more motivated to do well. We are aiming for the best results that we can for all of our learners and our learners have different needs. Some of them prefer practical courses, some of them prefer the more traditional academic courses, some are interested in specific areas of work and some need extra support and all of those different types of learners are catered for. We do also have to make available the eBAC to all learners. Now the eBAC, remember, is a package of qualifications which together form an accreditation. It's explained in your options booklet. So there are three main parts to our Key Stage 4 curriculum and they are detailed on your options form. So we have the core, the additional core, and we have four free options pools. So over the next few slides, I'll talk through each of those. So firstly, the core. The core are the compulsory subjects that everybody studies. So everybody studies English with most students doing English literature and English language, and everybody studies maths. Now, what we are aiming for is for the vast majority of students to gain at least a grade four by the time they finish their GCSEs in year 11. At least a grade four is what is needed for post 16 pathways. So if for some reason you don't achieve a grade four by the end of year 11, what you would find is you would be expected to study a level two qualification alongside whatever you do post 16, be it A level, college or apprenticeship. So we want to try and get that grade in the bag by the end of year 11, rather than you needing to do it once you finish your GCSEs. All students study science. There are two routes through this. So the two routes are combined science and separate science. So combined science provides two GCSEs, separate science provides three GCSEs. All students have core PE on their timetable. That would be one lesson a fortnight. It's not a qualification, but it is that element of physical activity that we are aiming for. And all students in year 10 would study life skills. That's whether we cover sex education, health education, and also our careers input. Now, the additional core, there are two different routes through here. So this is where we have provided on your personalised letter an area of direction for your young person. So some students will have been advised to choose the maths and English route. Please be reassured, this is not designed to be a negative thing. It's about giving the best opportunity to get a really good grade in both of those subjects. So on top of the normal English and maths lessons, students that choose maths and English in the additional core would have an extra lesson, one extra English lesson on one week, one extra maths lesson on the other week. It's their usual class, their usual group, their usual teacher. It's just giving a little bit of extra time to try and achieve the best grade that they can in that group. 
English is taught in mixed ability groups, but maths is setted and science is also setted. So the way we've decided this is the way that has worked successfully over the last few years is that sets one, two and three tend to be higher mathematicians. They tend to be in the higher sets of science. Remember, English is mixed ability. Sets four, five and six tend to be foundation groups. The science setting is very similar. And we find that those students do benefit from having the extra lesson of English and maths. So it's something that we've tried previously, it's been successful and that we're recommending for this academic year. The other pathway for the additional core is being provided with a small selection of subjects to choose from. Now, these three subjects are fast track courses, but gaining the same qualification as if they were chosen elsewhere. So for Creative Eye Media, that's what was referred to as ICT by most. It's the same amount of coursework, but in less time. For GCSE PE, the same qualification, the same amount of theory, but you would have fewer practical lessons, but still be expected to perform at a high level. So that is for people who maybe have a strength in the practical side of PE, because they wouldn't have as many practical lessons. Separate science is slightly different. So all students have six science lessons to gain two GCSEs. The separate scientists have an extra two lessons to gain an extra GCSE. So for all of these courses, it's two lessons a fortnight to do three lessons worth of work. So they're full qualifications, but in a shorter amount of time. So that requires motivation, an ability to work at a good pace and also being committed to studying those subjects and maybe having to do a little bit of extra outside of school. So you should be familiar with the four free options pools and the concept behind our whole options choice system is you choose one thing from each column. We also have some criteria on there whereby students need to choose across the pools a minimum of one of the grey shaded EBAC subjects. So just before I run through some examples, we'll have a look at some areas that might cause concern. So we don't want our students choosing a really narrow restrictive curriculum. We would like you to keep the breadth of study that you've had at Key Stage 3. However, we do recognise that if we're too prescriptive, for example, if we said everybody does a language, everybody does a humanity, that doesn't cater for students' strengths and areas of specialism. So there is an element of choice. We advise breadth. However, you can specialise. For languages, remember we offer three languages. So you need to think about what you've studied at Key Stage 3 if you want to continue with the language. So if you've studied Spanish, of course, you can carry on doing Spanish. If you've studied French, of course, you can carry on doing French. And most students have studied German, so you may continue with that. The one thing I would say about modern foreign languages is if you want to take them post 16, so at A level, you do need to have studied your language at GCSE. There are very few courses where that is essential, but languages is one of them. We also, remember, have to be mindful of the EBAC. So everybody does need to do one of the grey shaded subjects. But remember what the EBAC package is and it's listed there. So it's entirely up to you. You can opt for doing the EBAC subjects or not, but we do have to offer that to all students. Other areas of concern, we need to be mindful of restrictions that we face. So the timetable is based on those option pools. So it's designed as a best fit for the resources that we've got, the staffing, the rooming that we've got, and also as a best fit for the cohort of young people that we're working with. So I might find that I'm swapping subjects around between pools because lots of people have chosen things in one column and I have to do that balancing behind the scenes. So we need to be mindful of choosing one subject in each column because they are your timetable slots. You can't be in two places at the same time. 
We also have to be aware of the staffing we've got and the rooms that we've got. You would want a specialist teacher teaching you in a specialist room. So we have to be careful that the curriculum we offer fits with that. We also have to be careful of class sizes. So our class sizes for most subjects, we would not go above 30 students. For practical subjects, it's likely to be smaller. But I also have to be careful that we don't have classes that are just three or four students. That's not a class, that's a small group. And those tiny numbers of students choosing things are not viable classes. So sometimes on the rare occasion, I do have to say that subjects won't run. Usually it's fine, but please just be aware that class sizes are a restriction that we have to work within. And of course, we have to work within our school budget. Amongst our qualifications on offers are a number of vocational and alternative courses. So the vocational courses are listed there. They're directly linked to an area of employment. And all of those courses are examined in a different way. They tend to have a lot of coursework and controlled assessment and a slightly smaller amount of exam. We also have alternative provision, primarily designed for some of our students with higher levels of special educational needs. And those are assessed and agreed by Mrs. Moore Arsenko. So with them, if those courses might apply to you, you need to have a look at the very bottom of the options form and you will see it talks about a bespoke offer. So if you have a particular special educational need, which means that you might not cope with the rigour of the full curriculum, or you might struggle with full time lessons, and Mrs Moore is already aware of your needs, then it might be that we can do something really personalised for you. So on this slide, you can see how our faculty areas are organised. And you can see we have a wide range of courses underneath those umbrella terms of the different faculties. So if you're aiming for breadth and balance across your subject choices, you might choose one subject from four of the different faculty areas. You might decide, for example, if you're somebody that's really creative and you have a flair for creative arts, you might choose two things from that grouping and then one thing from other groupings. And that's fine, but keeping that idea about balance is supported by this slide. So what next? Most importantly, you need to have read and absorbed all of the information that's been provided for you. So you've got your options booklet, you've had the input from staff. Please also have a little look at the school website under the curriculum tab. You will see the different subject areas listed and within some of those they've saved presentations that they've been providing to year nine students. So do have a look at that make sure you've had a really good think and a chat at home. And then you return the form to school via the special email address that is purely for options. So when your forms are returned to school, either a photo or an electronic copy of the form that you've edited, those will be processed and input. And remember, as long as we're meeting the deadline, all of those things will be get put in at the same time. It's not a first come, first served, process. Okay, I'm going to run through a few examples of how you could put your option choices together. You're familiar with the grids, you're familiar with the grey shaded subject, remember one thing from each column, make sure that you've got one grey across everything that you've chosen and remember the additional core, the first column, relates to your personalised letter. So if a student's been directed to do additional English and maths and they want to do business studies, geography, history and resistant materials, this is how it could be put together. You can see one from each column, everything fits. And that grey shaded subject amongst these, so they've actually chosen two, they've chosen geography and history. 
Now make sure when you're trialing your ideas that things fit together. Business is in three columns. Geography is across all of them, so is history. But resistant materials is only in pool A and pool D. So when you choose subjects like that, you need to make sure that you put them in so that everything fits. A different example, this time a student's been advised to choose a subject from the additional core. They want to choose one from each column, but they want to achieve the EBAC. So they're thinking I need to do a language and I need to do either history or geography. So you can see there are multiple ways to choose this regardless of what you choose in the additional core. And that includes um, if someone has been directed to choose the additional maths and English, you can still achieve that EBAC accreditation regardless of what is sitting in that first column. OK, so things to note. Unfortunately, there are some impossible combinations. Some subjects are appearing just in one option column. So you need to be really careful if something only appears once, you can only choose it in that place. And if you have a clash, there's not a lot that can be done about it. But there are other subjects that we need to be mindful of. So art, art photography and art textiles, they are all art. OK, there is too much overlap between them. So we don't have students doing more than one of those. Similarly, resistant materials, graphic products and systems and control, they are all GCSE design technology. So they're exactly the same exam, exactly the same course, examined at the same time. The only difference is the material that you work with. So we can't take more than one of those. And those are highlighted by the arts and the design technology subjects on your options form to remind you. We also need to take extra care of subjects that have a very heavy course workload or taking lots of subjects that are all exam based and examined at the end. You need to think what works best for you and what your strengths are. We ask students to put their first choices in, but also a reserve. Now, the first choices are usually fine and um, it's very rare that I even have to speak to students about not being able to meet their first choices, but have a reserve on there. It just starts a conversation if one is needed. So things to remember, if you can't get all of your first choices, we will have a one to one conversation with you and give you some time to reconsider. At present, with us not being in school, those conversations would be on Teams. But if we are back in school, then obviously those conversations can be face to face with one another. So you need to consider your decision really carefully. Classes get full. We can't make assumptions that we would just be able to swap if we change our minds. We also need to bear in mind it's a two year commitment. And I often get asked by people who say, I don't know what I want to do for a career or I don't know what I want to do after my GCSEs. And that is absolutely fine. Most post 16 pathways are looking for the grades that you got, not the subjects that you chose. So play to your strengths. Choose the subjects that you think you'd be able to perform well in. The only exception, remember, is languages. You have to have done your target language at GCSE if you want to take it on later, be it A-levels at sixth form or A-levels at a college. But that really is the only one that's very, very strict on the subjects. It's mostly about getting a package of grades that are best you can do. Just a few advisories then. Please don't make choices based on what your friends do. OK, if you choose something in pool A and your friend chooses it in pool A, it doesn't mean you'll be in the same class. When you are choosing on your options form, you're communicating the subjects that you would like to do. 
you're not choosing which class you go into. So my job at school is to work to try and balance the class sizes and to make sure the groups are nicely balanced across the whole timetable. Please also don't um, choose based on what previous cohorts have said about subjects. Courses change, styles of delivery change. And yes, advice from older siblings and friends is useful, but don't make that the only thing that you decide on. It's lovely that people are motivated and inspired by their teachers to choose subjects. And that's exactly right. But please don't make choices because you like a teacher or dislike a teacher for any reason. So we don't know who will be teaching Key Stage 4 classes. So we shouldn't be making choices on likes and dislikes. Inspiration for a subject, absolutely fine. Likes and dislikes, not so much. The perception that some subjects are easier or harder than others isn't always helpful. All of the subjects are equivalent to one another. So in theory, they're the same level of challenge as one another. How they're examined might suit some people better than others. So exams versus course, I can, that's fine. But there is no easy option, no easy way out here. Finally, I would remind you to ask questions, to read the options booklet and to find out about subjects. Don't choose something because you don't know about it. So in terms of making the decision, you've got your booklet, the website, the information that staff have been providing you. If you need any further advice, remember ask the subject teachers or the link person that's listed in the options booklet. Form tutors are a great source for dialogue or you can ask Mr Brooks who knows you well. And remember, you've had recent reports and you've had parents evening recently. Do some finding out about how subjects are assessed. Make sure you're having valuable conversations at home. And if you're totally stuck, some students might feel the need to have a one-to-one -one dialogue. Just send an email to that options email address if that is something that you feel that you desperately need. Now, if you change your mind, firstly, don't panic. If we are back in school, then you can always pop to see me, bring a signed note, pop a note under my door, however you want to communicate it. If you've changed your mind, telling me sooner rather than later is really, really useful. If you change your mind and we're not at school or if it's over the summer holidays, then email that options email address to put your request in. What I'm interested in is why you would like to choose something different. Okay, over the summer, I will respond to your emails. It won't necessarily be immediate, but they will definitely be picked up before September and before your timetable's in place. In the first few weeks of year 10, you are able to swap subjects, not drop them, but swap them. But please be aware that classes might be full by that stage. So try and make your decisions nice and early. The deadline for swapping, we tend to say, is around the end of September. Sometimes we can run until October half term, but any swaps beyond that aren't ideal. There's too much that will have been covered and it's really hard to get caught up. So changing your mind is fine but sooner rather than later is beneficial. So finally, a reminder that the options form deadline is just over a month away. It's Friday the 5th of March, and you can return your photo or your annotated electronic copy of the options form to that options email address. Thank you very much.